In this video, I want to talk about a muscle known as the diaphragm. Now, the diaphragm belongs here in the torso model as a muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. The diaphragm is a muscle for respiration. The diaphragm has muscle fibers forming a dome shape, and this is a three-dimensional structure. It's much higher in the middle than it is laterally. It's much higher anteriorly than it is posteriorly. Because it is a structure that divides the thorax and abdomen, we have some openings in this diaphragm muscle to allow passage of structures that must get from the thorax into the abdomen. As you can see, if I were to put the breastplate back on this model, we have fibers of the diaphragm that are coming from the what is called the costal margin, the very edge of our rib cage, heading toward a blue area that I'll talk about in a minute called the central tendon. We also have fibers coming from the posterior vertebral column, the 12th rib, up into the central tendon of the diaphragm. Here we see mostly an anterior and somewhat inferior view of the diaphragm where I want to point out a few very specific structures of the diaphragm. The diaphragm actually has two slips of muscle that come off of the vertebral column at roughly L1 and L2 vertebral level and they rise up over an opening known as the aortic hiatus where the thoracic aorta passes into the abdominal cavity but more specifically they also form a loop around another opening in the diaphragm known as the esophageal hiatus. We will talk about that in just a moment. These are known as the crus of the diaphragm. The portion of the crus that comes from the right side of the vertebral column is known as the right crus and the portion that comes from the left side is known as the left crus. Notice that they form a loop around the hi esophageal hiatus and mostly that loop is made from the right crus of the diaphragm. Also from this view we can see the fibers of the diaphragm coming up from the 12th rib and then the rest of the costal margin. So a good anterior yet somewhat inferior view of the diaphragm. Now I've removed the diaphragm from the torso model and you can see the different fiber directions. Remember I said the diaphragm was a dome shaped muscle. All of the fibers converge on the upper part of the dome which is not muscular but is actually a tendinous structure known as the central tendon of the diaphragm. If we look down on the diaphragm from a superior view we can see that there are two openings associated with the central tendon. One is called the vena cable hiatus. The vena cable hiatus is for the passage of the inferior vena cava returning blood from the abdominal cavity to the heart. Somewhat more toward the left but almost right on the midline and a little bit inferior to the vena cable hiatus we have another hiatus known as the esophageal hiatus. The esophageal hiatus is for passage of the esophagus the muscular tube that carries food from our oral cavity to our stomach. So this is for passage of the esophagus. And then we also see kind of a strange shape to the back of the diaphragm. This is referred to as the aortic hiatus. When we saw that inside the torso, there was an opening there. That opening is not actually an opening in the diaphragm, but rather is an opening posterior to the diaphragm. So the aortic hiatus. Textbook-wise, the openings in the diaphragm, the various hiatus, are located at specific vertebral levels. The vena cable hiatus is defined as being found at the T8 to T9 thoracic level, so anterior to the T8 T9 thoracic vertebra. This is not a variation from person to person, but the range moves because we have to remember this is a muscle and as it contracts it will lower, so the movement will vary so from T8 to T9, T8 to T9 for the vena cable hiatus. The esophageal hiatus for passage of the esophagus is textbook wise considered to be at T10, the T10 vertebral level. Now it's a little bit lower on the dome shape of the diaphragm, so it doesn't move as much, but it does move some. But you have to remember that if you take into account the thickness of the T10 vertebra and the associated intervertebral discs, we could easily have roughly an inch of movement and still be considered at the T10 vertebral level. The aortic hiatus, because it actually passes behind the diaphragm, 
does not move. The aortic hiatus is described as being at the T12 vertebral level. So the thoracic aorta becomes the abdominal aorta when it passes through the aortic hiatus at the T12 vertebral level. Now while we're talking about the hiatus, I want to talk more about the esophageal hiatus. Remember that we had the right and left cruise of the diaphragm that we showed forming a loop around the esophageal hiatus? This is anatomically very important. When the diaphragm contracts and lowers, you compress your abdominal contents slightly, which means you will compress everything in the abdomen as well, including the stomach. If you compress your stomach, you could force stomach contents back up through the esophagus. We don't want to do that. Every time we breathe, we don't want food going from our stomach back into the esophagus. So it's built into the system. As the diaphragm contracts and lowers, we know it's going to compress the abdomen a little bit. This right and left cruise tightens and squeezes the esophagus right before it goes into the stomach. So it acts as an esophageal sphincter. So that when the diaphragm contracts and lowers, the stomach gets compressed, but also the esophagus gets pinched shut so that food will not reflux through the esophageal hiatus into the esophagus, except in extreme cases. Everybody in the room has probably thrown up. You know that you can get abdominal contents back up through the esophagus. But this is a preventative mechanism during normal breathing because we do compress our abdominal contents only slightly every time we inhale. 